Hello, hello everybody. So, am I audible? Audible? All right. So, we're going to talk the least and do the most number of code developments we can. So, if you have a laptop, just open it because uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, by the end of this particular workshop, you should be able to deploy a subgraph and understand what the graph does, which is basically indexing blockchain data. So, what is basically indexing? Indexing means getting information which is already existing in the uh, in, in the database in a more skewed format so that you can get it for your own like you know needs. For example, there is so much data that exists in the world, right? But you just need data that is required for your particular application. For example, when you see an Ethereum block, you should be able to see there is so much data that exists. In one particular Ethereum block, there is MakerDAO transaction. In one particular Ethereum block, there is Uniswap transaction. In one particular Ethereum block, there is a Aave transaction. And let's say you are a Uniswap developer and you just need information about Uniswap. How do you get that? That's what is indexing. So basically, indexing information is that all the blockchain has all the data, but you just need information for your own needs. And for that, you need to create a middleware such as subgraphs so that uh, the smart contract, which has all the data, can get the information that is required to your UI using a middleware. And that middleware is called a subgraph. So in uh, TLDR, a subgraph is basically a middleware which gets the information that exists on the blockchain for your own needs. And uh, <clears throat> that's about it. So basically, this Ethereum blockchain is converted to such simple databases which can be queried via GraphQL APIs. That's what is the graph. In, in one word, we can also say the graph is actually uh, Google of Web3. In Google, we have Web2 data. There is so much Web2 data that exists. But Google, if we just search uh, ETH Tokyo, ETH Tokyo, it will only give me things that are related to ETH Tokyo. And the reason behind that is there is so much web data, but we just need information for our own needs. And that's where Google indexes all the web web two data to give you what you need. In the graph as well, there is so much web three data. The blockchain data is basically open source. You can do whatever you want with it. You can actually get in whatever information you need, but there is so much data. You just need information, let's say, of all the arbitra arbitrage position that is between PancakeSwap and Uniswap. For that, you just need to have your concentrated information. And for that, you will be creating your own subgraphs. So uh, there are two ways to do it. The first way is you create your own indexer, uh, burn the whole DAP, and that's how you create it. That's normally the Web3 way, but not the correct way, all right? There are better ways to actually get the information to your UI and that is by using this middleware known as a, a graph by creating a subgraph so that you can get that information for your own needs. So that's about it. I'll stop talking and let's go together. All right. I'll start from the very basics. We'll first of all deploy a smart contract and then we will create a subgraph out of that smart contract. Then I will do a transaction on that particular smart contract so that at the end you can see that that subgraph has indexed that particular smart contract and you can get the information you need for your smart contract. All right, let's do it. Let's go to remix.com. If you have a laptop right now, just open it up. And uh, at the end, if you're able to create a subgraph with me, uh, we have some exciting rewards, which are different from bounties. So first of all, I just create a subgraph, let's say an ERC721, which is mintable. Okay, we create this remix subgraph, uh, uh, this uh, smart contract. All right, we have this smart contract. Everybody has seen this ERC721 NFT basic mintable smart contract. I've not created it. I've just uh, gone to remix and just, you know, taken the, uh, the code template. So the smart contract is with us now what we do is just deploy it let me check that i am not on ethereum mainnet otherwise the workshop is very expensive for me uh, okay i'm on gorli and uh, i deploy this smart contract 
inject web3 deploy the smart contract send transaction uh, can somebody send me some girly eight uh, send transaction come on network is busy oh my god uh, okay let's do it on Cipolia, which is the new testnet it's a live demo anything can happen by the way i wanted to make an announcement right after the end that Cipolia is now on the graph but now you know i'll be deploying a smart contract on Cipolia and then doing a subgraph on that so the big news is that the graph is now integrated with Cipolia chain and you can deploy your smart contracts on Cipolia and we are going to do it right now. So let's just do it. This is Cipolia testnet. Hopefully this works. If this does not, then I am texting Ethereum Foundation that we need to talk. So, okay, so the smart contract is being deployed. By then, what we do is we on the uh, go on the Graph Studio. We go on the Graph Studio, and uh, basically just log in with our MetaMask. Once we have done that, I'll create a new subgraph, and I'll name it Iris, who's sitting right there. Uh, my colleague from the Graph, and uh, use Cipolia testnet, create a subgraph. So, Iris subgraph, which is a Iris NFT. Is, uh, uh, is 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 having this kind of a UI, which is a studio UI, right? And if you are new to the graph, the first thing you have to do is have the libraries installed globally. So npm install dash g graph uh, protocol slash graph CLI. This is this particular thing that you have to deploy. Once you have that, you will be on terminal. And if you do just graph, you should be able to see all this. If you have this that means you have all the global libraries that are required okay i hope the transaction is done and we have our smart contract and uh, we need to actually like verify this particular smart contract okay so i flatten the file first of all this is the smart contract i flatten the file a little bit not little bit, totally. Flatten the file and verify. See, single file, uh, 0 0.18. Uh, I hope I'm not very speeding up. If you are coding with me, just to be able to code along. And then I just deploy. I'm not a robot. Verify. Okay, so my smart contract is verified now. I can just go here and be able to check. I'm also going to tell you specifically why I verified my particular smart contract. So basically, with the graph, we created tools so that you don't have to like write a subgraph from scratch. Most of the things, most of the events are already catered upon and you just have to make changes so that your UI needs are fulfilled. All right. So we have just a small TLDR. We had uh, <clears throat> we had a NFT called as Iris that we deployed, right? And then uh, we deployed it on the Cipolia network, uh, and uh, we actually verified that particular smart contract, and it's verified now. And we also logged into the uh, Subgraph Studio so that now we can do the next things, right? We go on the terminal now. And I create a MKDIR known as Iris NFT. You're getting very famous today, Iris. Hey, I need some money after this. Okay. Iris NFT. So we are inside. Now I'll do graph init dash dash index events so that all the events that exist in a ERC 721 721 open Zeppelin. Uh, smart contract which is all the events that exist which is transfer approve 
and approve for all. All these events are actually indexed by the uh, by the subgraph. So basically, subgraphs uh, index events, and in all the smart contracts we have events so that we can show that to the front end. But there is no way to actually show that. So you create a subgraph so that the events can be indexed, right? So in a ERC seven twenty one, we have three events: transfer, approve, approve for all, and all these events will be indexed by the subgraph by just this magical command dash dash from index dash dash from contract, and then uh, I paste the contract address, which is this one. That should be. Okay. Wait. Graph in it. Okay. This is it. This should be able to. So this is a EVM chain. Sepolia is a EVM chain. By the way, the graph is also on Cosmos, Near, uh, and other places. But we'll. This is Sepolia is a EVM chain, so we'll just deploy it there. This is Subgraph Studio, and the slug name is uh, Iris. Again, uh, Iris. This is Sepolia, so we'll choose Sepolia. And this is a smart contract. So you see fetching ABI. So basically I've verified my particular smart contract so that uh, the graph command could fetch all the events from the ABI because I verified it, right? It could not uh, uh, fetch the start block. So I'll just take the smart start block from here. This is the start block. Uh, contract name is contract. And uh, this should be able to just generate a subgraph for us. So an ERC721 has three events, right? And those three events will have one subgraph so that we can uh, index all the activities happening on the Iris NFT. Uh, how many of you have been able to reach till here? Okay, nobody. Wow. I like it. <laughs> Uh, no problem you have a lot of time we can always talk after this workshop as well but this can be a great introduction to this amazing piece of infrastructure which is going to be the Google of Web3 apparently we go inside okay so you see the subgraph is already created and I'll go in a little depth to explain you what are the parts of a subgraph, right? There is, first of all, a YAML file, which actually defines what's inside uh, the graph, what is inside the subgraph. What that means is that a subgraph has three things. The first is you need to define the network where you are de deploying it, right? Which is Sepolia. If it is on Gorli, this would be Gorli. If it was on uh, Polygon, it would be Matic. If it was on a Gnosis chain, it would be Gnosis chain, so on and so forth. So first of all, you need to define the network. The second thing is you need to define the address you are actually, the smart contract address that you are actually indexing. Then the start block. And uh, then there is this mapping file, right, which will always come up. In that, there are these entities. This is the most interesting part of the subgraph. Uh, what are these entities? are the schemas basically you see here they're already created by the subgraph by that graph in it index event file so basically when you uh, have a smart contract it has events approve approve for all transfer i showed you that and according to that it created schemas for us so that we can you know basically query these so when you, when i actually go on this uh, this particular smart contract and hit transfer that means i have done an event right and that needs to be indexed so that i uh, so that you know uh, at the end the dashboard of your ui can show that this iris nft id1 was transferred 
uh, from my address to some other address in your NFT marketplace, for example, right? So basically, you create these schemas so that you can tell that, okay, an approve function was done, a transfer function was done, that will be required for your UI. So the first thing is, you always define the schema, right? Here are the schemas with all the things that you want. And the second thing is the events, right? You are actually indexing events and then converting them to schemas. So basically, what happens in Ethereum is that you get events, right? And those events give you data. That data needs to be put in such a way that it can be queried. So basically, these events have raw data and the mapping file converts those raw datas to schemas, right? And that's about a subgraph. You define a subgraph in YAML file, then you have these mapping files so that these events, which have the raw data, can convert the data into schemas which are such good looking. So in the mapping.ts file, you actually define in TypeScript that how do you want to convert the, uh, the, the data from the event which is raw data to these schemas. That's it. So mapping.ts file is the major file where you define logic. That's it. So this is all about it. We have everything that's required and now we will. Uh, the schema for, is defined by, like it's by default. But uh, if you want, let's say just uh, a Uniswap position. So I'll just delete everything and just have an LP position with ID, transaction from, transaction to and stuff like that. So whatever you want to query, you just define in schema. And according to that, you set the mapping.ts file, which is the logic for the event, so that the schema can be created. That's it. Well, great question, by the way. So this is about it. Now we will deploy this subgraph and see the magic of how do you index information in such good formats. Uh, we do the graph auth. This is my key. Don't use it, guys. If you do, then uh, you are really bad people. So the <laughs> I do the auth, then I do code gen and graph build. Okay, everything works. And at the end, I just deploy this subgraph in the studio. 0 0.0.1. 0 .1. So you see, it took 20 minutes for a person to have a smart contract, have information via GraphQL APIs. So the subgraph is de deployed and I can just go on the playground which I cannot see right now. Okay, it's deployed. And just refresh maybe. Yeah, you can see that the subgraph is deployed. I can go on the playground and check. It's empty, right? This is cool. I can just go to transfers and I can still see, uh, let's say, from ID and to, and it's still empty. Wow. So much work and nothing done. Why? Because we have not done any transactions, guys. Come on. You're not paying attention. <laughs> let's do a transaction and then I'll show you that, the, that that indexing happens in a second. If you don't use a subgraph, you'll have to create a whole indexer have an event being, you know, tracked every time and pay 100k to AWS. By the way, AWS office is just around that corner. So don't tell them. Uh, so this is it. I'll just... I'll just save Mint and Iris NFT for myself. Is that okay, Iris? Okay. Uh, so I just go here and uh, do and do one and just do a safe mint. So I've transferred one NFT into my particular account and now uh, the transaction once it is successful you can, you'll be able to see that the subgraph is able to catch that event get all the information from to ID and whatever you need and uh, be able to serve you. Uh, is the transaction successful? Not yet. We need a layer 2 to test nets too, I guess. 
who's building one okay the transaction is successful and it took 31 seconds and now you just go here boom you see the information right so as soon as the transaction is successful you see the indexing happening and now you have this amazing graphql api over here and you want to query anything around you know let's say iris nft or let's say you have board ape yacht club nft right and you want to know that who is the top most holder right you want to know who owns this particular id nft and at what point in time he bought it at what point in time scam he bought it you can get everything just by indexing that particular smart contract so this is the power of creating a subgraph at the end you need a subgraph as a middleware between your smart contract and your ui so that you can put in all the information from the smart contract to your ui so that's the missing piece in creating a full stack decentralized application this is about it guys this is about it uh, why do you need the graph? Because there are 15 million blocks in Ethereum and if you want to create your own indexer, you'll have to scan every particular block and get the information. Who uses the graph? Everybody who has good brains and good devs. <laughs> so that means Uniswap has an info.uniswap page, right? You all have, might have seen that. All of you are, who are billionaires because of crypto have seen it. So who has seen it? Okay, just uh, Marcus maybe. So yeah, so you see this particular info.uniswap page, right? And all the information here is just smart contracts interacting. So you are a user, you go to Uniswap, you interact, you do USDT, USDC swap, and that swap is a smart contract event. That's tracked by us Uniswap subgraph, and you get the information here. See, this is a Uniswap subgraph. I'll just expand it a little bit if I can. But yeah, this is a api.thegraph.uniswap. So basically Uniswap has created a subgraph so that they can get in all the information from their Uniswap smart contract into this UI page. So basically, as I was telling you, the TLDR is if you have a smart contract and you want to create a application which is used by humans, not junky developers, you need to create a UI. And for that, there is a middleware known as subgraphs so that you can use it, right? Uh, so this is about it. We also have substreams coming by next month, right? But you can still use it. Basically, uh, indexing events for really fast chains like Polygon and ZK Sync right now coming, it's like a one second block and you need to index everything. And if you have, let's say, 10,000 transactions in every block, then it's it becomes a little tough to scale it. And with the current subgraph infrastructure, that's why we have substreams. With subgraphs, you can only index events. With substreams, you can also index every granular data. For example, uh, you can index addresses. So basically, you can give your DGEN score to a particular address by all the interactions it has done on the blockchain, all the transfers it has done on blockchain, everything. There is something known as on-chain reputation, which is becoming very big right now. And you need to compute an address's on-chain reputation based on what it has done. And for that, you can use substreams. It is already coming along. It is a different stack. But uh, I just wanted to introduce this because we have bounties, right? Good, good, good bounties. This 1800 bucks can get you some good uh, meals in uh, uh, Shibuya Crossing, right? I, I went there yesterday. Good, good place. Uh, so if you uh, create a new subgraph, you can uh, the, get 1800 bucks, 1400 bucks, or 1000 bucks based on your uh, capacity and how you developed it. Or what you can do is be a little more intelligent, like me, yeah? So, and uh, create, uh, use the existing subgraph for dashboards. For example, I'll, I'll give you an introduction to that as well. For example, there is. So I have a repo in which I have, cre uh, you know, named all the top subgraphs, right? This is the repo. Misari ERC721 Lens Protocol subgraph. So if you are using Lens and you want to just, you know, use something for your dashboard for a simple hack, 
let's say you want to find out which lens address is the biggest scammer or something like that, you can just use the lens protocol subgraph and use it for, uh, you know, creating good dashboards. One good example would be in ETH India, somebody created a arbitrage bot for all the Uniswap subgraphs. So basically what he did is Uniswap is deployed on three chains and let's say USDC ETH price on uh, Polygon is more than it's, it, it is on Ethereum. So he just queries the subgraph and it shows it on the dashboard that there is an arbitrage opportunity. There is an arbitrage opportunity, right? These kind of innovating things you can do just by using a subgraph already created by Uniswap team or Misari team and do your own thing. So this is about it. This is how you create a subgraph and uh, index information for your UI. That's about it and this is about me. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here for three days. If I'm not, uh, you know, going out and drinking Saka. <laughs> so you can find me here. Uh, uh, and uh, by the way, this was the last thing that I introduced the first. A news that uh, the graph now indexes Sepolia testnet because graph testnet costs, uh, Gurley testnet costs a lot of money. This is about it. Thank you.